YouTubers, and welcome to another Doctor Who action figure review. I hope you're all having a very good start to the new year, and what better way to start it off than with a new set of Doctor Who action figures. So today we're going to be looking at the latest Underground Toys Forbidden Planet classic series release, which is the Claws of Axos set. Many of us probably pre-ordered this set roughly about a year ago when it was originally put up on the Forbidden Planet website. The figures were due to be released along with the Demons set in about June, July of 2013. However, there was some sort of factory issue that we weren't privy to, and so the set was delayed. So, although it's been nearly a year of waiting, we finally have the set in our hands. So, was it worth the wait? Well, let's take a look. The figures come packaged in the standard Classic Series window box. It features many of the same design elements from previous Classic box sets, and features images of the three characters featured inside. The side of the box also features more images of the characters from the set, and the back of the box again features some more images of the Brigadier, Joe Grant and the Axon Man, as well as another image of the Axons, and a very detailed biography about the entire episode. The inside of the box features an image of the Axon spaceship, along with the TARDIS and another Axon. Out of the packaging, let's start with the Brigadier first. So let's look at the articulation. Articulation is standard for the Classics line. Articulation at the head, can't really do a 360. He has bowl jointed shoulders, which can go out to the side, and they can do 360s in rotation. He has Articulation at the biceps, which also do 360s. Articulation at the elbows, so they can go up and down. Wrist articulation, which also does 360 degree turns. Articulation at the waist, which can just very slightly twist. It is a bit stiff. He has a T crotch piece, which allows the legs to move forwards and out to the sides. Only very slightly, it's hindered by the jumper. Articulation at the thighs, which can do 360, and articulation at the knees. The Brigadier uses several elements from the previous version that was released last year in the Three Doctors set. The legs and hands are all from the previous version, and the head also comes from the previous version. However, this time they have released him with a beret as opposed to the flat cap. The beret has been really nicely sculpted, and we even have a really nice piece of detailing with the unit badge printed on the front. Now, like I said, the head sculpt on this version of the Brigadier is exactly the same as the previous version. However, on this version, the paint applications are far superior to the previous Three Doctors set version. As such, I think this really makes the likeness in the sculpt really stand out. And whereas with the Three Doctors version, I thought, well, okay, it looks roughly like Nicholas Courtney. Here, I think it looks very much like Nicholas Courtney. The fact that the moustache and the eyebrows have been painted on in a much more realistic fashion really makes the sculpt stand out. It doesn't have those sort of cartoony looking eyebrows like the previous version featured. As you can see, with the two versions side by side, the new version is far superior. Very impressive head sculpt. Even though it is the same sculpt, uh, it just goes to show how that alteration in the paint details can really make a figure look that much better. So the costume on this version is very different to the previous release, featuring the jumper and shirt. The sculpting is very nice, the ridged effect in the sculpt really stands out, and it really captures the look of his jumper. We've got some very nice detailing with the buckle and the holster on the belt, which has been highlighted with that nice metallic gold paint. The back of the belt features some more little buckles and hooks, no doubt to hook some extra bits and pieces onto his belt should he need them. And it also features something that I wasn't even aware was on the costume, which is the small badges on the top, which again have been really nicely painted. You have the crown, which has the nice gold paint and the red little dots in between, and the three gold diamonds on either side of the shoulder pads. Now the way that they've accomplished this on the figure is very much in the same vein as what they did with the previous Leela figures that were released. It is simply just a new PVC piece, almost like a vest, that has gone over the top of the solid plastic torso and has been glued on. It works out a lot cheaper to do and it means you can get a bit more reuse value out of the figure. Sadly, we do have quite a clear seam 
down the back of the figure, as you can see, going down from the collar. Uh, perhaps they could have disguised this in a different way, maybe if it was just all solid and it just sort of slotted over the top, they may have been able to hide it. To be honest, it really doesn't bother me, it's this very tiny nitpick. Overall, I think it looks really, really good. I think it works very well. The figure also includes new arms to match the overall look, with both arms featuring elbow pads. As mentioned previously, the sculpt for the gloves on this figure are exactly the same as on the previous release, however this time they come formed in a black plastic. The sculpt for the legs and the shoes are exactly the same as on the previous release as well, however this time the trousers are in a slightly lighter green, and the shoes are in a slightly lighter brown. The figure also comes with his handgun, which is exactly the same as the previous version released in the Three Doctors set. Moving on to the Joe Grant figure, again, very much the standard articulation. The head can move. Uh, you probably could get 360 degrees out of this, but the hair might hinder it slightly. She does have ball-jointed shoulders, uh, so they can move out to the sides, and they will rotate 360 degrees. They don't move out entirely out to the sides, but you can get quite a fair bit of movement. 360 degrees at the biceps elbow articulation and 360 degrees at the wrists which are slightly hindered by the cuffs on her shirt. She has 360 degree rotation at the waist. Uh, again she features a T crotch piece uh, at the waist which means that her legs can move forwards and out to the sides and then we also have articulation at the knees. Detail-wise, this version of Joe Grant is much improved on the Three Doctors version, namely in terms of the head sculpt. Um, she shares several parts with the previously released Joe Grant, which include her legs and her hands. The head is very much the same head sculpt, however, they have altered the sculpt slightly, which is a very big improvement upon the previous release namely in the face. Now the previous version of Joe had quite a very wide mouth, um, sort of looking sort of quite smiley. It did look a bit odd, it didn't really look like Katie Manning in any fashion. Again, you know, it doesn't look an awful lot like Katie Manning, but it looks much improved compared to the previous release. The, as you can see with the two side by side, the one on the right looks so much better, it looks far more human, the one on the left, I don't know, she looks like she's kind of possessed by some sort of demon. So I do think that this new version of Joe is far superior to the original release. Other than the face, the head sculpt is exactly the same as the previous version. Lots of nice sculpting in the hair, lots of nice washes and things to give it lots of texture and look, make it look really detailed. Much like the Brigadier figure, this version of Joe has an entirely new piece to the torso. Again, it's like that sort of PVC vest type thing. Uh, the seam on this is much better hidden because it's just down the front. Overall, you know, it look it doesn't entirely match how her coat looks in that episode. The pattern on the jacket it has sort of like lots of circles and things. I think it would have been far too complicated for them to do. So just doing like the pinstripes to suggest that there's some form of pattern or segmentation works just as well. They've given it a slightly darker pink and they've given it a, like a dirty wash over the top to try and give it a darker colour. I think perhaps the colouring could be slightly darker. It does look quite orangey in the episode. Either way, I think this works very well. It also has some really nice details. You can see there's some sort of pockets sculpted onto the sides and she's got the buttons going at the top. Uh, what I do like, however, is the inclusion of the little badge, which seems to be some sort of animal, maybe like a little mouse or a bear or something. That's a nice little touch. I think it works really well with the rest of the figure. As you can see from the back, the lines, the sort of pinstripe looking lines, aren't quite so obvious. I think maybe they've just sort of like blended in with the dark wash. I don't think they're quite that different enough from the pink, um, but it seems to work better on the front. But either way, I still think it works really well. The arms are also different from the previous release, much slimmer, just matching the rest of the outfit, and also with the sort of frilly cuffs at the bottom of the wrists. Just like the previous version of Joe, she features her rings on both hands. Again, on her left hand, all of the rings are sculpted and painted, but on the right hand, there is no sculpted rings, they are all just painted on. And she's wearing her trademark go-go boots, this time in a purple colour to match the rest of her very 70s looking outfit. Finally, we have the Axon Man. Again, all the same sort of articulation as the previous figures. 360 degree articulation at the head, ball jointed shoulders so they can go out to the sides, they can rotate 360 degrees back and forth. We have articulation at the bicep which does 360s, 
Articulation at the elbows, so they go up and down. Articulation at the wrists, so they can do 360s. Articulation at the waist, which can also do a 360 degree turn. Again, you have that T crotch piece here, which allows the hips to go forward, back, and out to the sides. On my version, the legs don't really go forward all that much, and I'm a bit scared that if I try to force it, you might rub some of the paint off. You have articulation at the thighs, which also do 360s, and articulation at the knees, so they can go back and forth. Now, I'm sure for most people, the thing that attracts them to this set is the inclusion of the Axon Humanoid. Now, this figure shares a lot of parts with a lot of different figures. The main basis of the sculpt is Sharaz Jack, which, when the original publicity images came out, I was a bit dubious about, because if you watch the episode, the Axons, they're wearing leotards, this very skin tight. But if you look at the Sharaz Jack figure, and if you look at this figure, the sleeves on the clothes, you know, they're quite baggy, there you know, isn't a leotard. The head sculpt's really good. It really matches what we see on screen. Um, you can sort of kind of at different angles. I think you can actually quite it really. I think at certain angles it really does capture the look of the actor playing the part. However, I will say that when you have it on a side profile, the face does look kind of squished. It does look like it's been sort of compressed. You don't really get that from the front, but you do get that a bit from the sides. As you can see, I think it's just. I'm not sure, perhaps down this side here, it just looks maybe a little bit flat. It doesn't really affect the figure at all, but it's just something that I noticed. Uh, but otherwise, I think the head sculpt's very impressive. We've got some really nice sculpting going on with the curls and the hair, some very nice paint applications. You've got the gold, there's some sort of bronze wash in there as well to really make those curls stand out. So let's move on to the actual body of the figure, which is what I said was the thing that was... Uh, giving me a bit of concern as to how this was going to actually look. Now the patterns on the body, that gold against that sort of off-white, sort of creamy yellowy colour, I think that works really well. Alright, the patterns aren't exactly the same as they are in the episode, but, you know, they're abstract enough, they're weird enough, they, they're a good enough match, I think. The actual use of the body for Shara's Jack, I think it works okay. My main issue, you know, I mean, you can see sort of the main torso here, it is pretty skin tight. My only real issue is here around the waist. Now there's a bit here, you probably can't see it so well from the front. You can see here, there is a sort of a bit of a curve and then it goes quite flat. Now the reason for that is on the Shara's Jack figure, he had this sort of belt piece uh, that was sort of lifted up into the, sort of this high collar. Now this belt went across this flat area there so, obviously, that's what it was designed for. It was to make it so that the belt wasn't sticking out further, so it wasn't all protruding. But here, it just creates the effect that, I don't know, maybe his leotard's just sort of curled up a bit. Or perhaps his axon has started to develop a bit of a middle-aged spread. It doesn't look too bad. It could have been worse, I think. But overall, I think it works all right. At the back of the figure, again, because of the Shara's Jack body, you do get these seams in the back of the clothes. So, uh, so you've got them up here, you've got them down the middle. Again, I don't think it's too bad. It's not overly noticeable. When you get down to the Axon's backside, the Shara's Jack body actually had pockets sculpted on, but here they've either altered the sculpt or perhaps this crotch piece is a slightly new piece, I'm not sure. The hands seem to be taken from one of the doctors, so so I think it could possibly be maybe Peter Davison or Paul McGann. I do think they use the doctor's hands across various doctors. Um, and they've just been painted in the same gold paint as the figure's head. Also worth a bit of a mention, just here in this little V bit, that's been painted the same gold colour as the rest of the Axon's head, just to give the suggestion that the costume doesn't go straight across his neck, because that'd be quite unnatural looking, I guess. So they've just made it look like the, the costume just scoops down a bit. I think the top of the legs here, again, I think that's probably taken from Shara's Jack. However, beneath that are entirely new legs. Now, I think there's a possibility that these have come from the Sutak figure, uh, or it could be entirely new. Overall, I'm really pleased with this set. I wasn't overly excited for it before it came out. Like I said, I was a bit unsure about the Axon Man and the Joe Grant. I wasn't 
particularly excited about. However, having the set in hand, I really do like the Axon Man. I think he works really well. I don't think that the use of the body was as bad as I expected it to be. I think it works really quite well, and I think the overall look of the figure is very nice. I think it really does stand out, all of those abstract gold patterns. The Joe Grant is very much improved from the previous release of Joe, although I really do like the clothes that that version of Joe's wearing. The head sculpt here is very much improved. The Brigadier is a nice, fun variant. It's nice to see him in that new outfit. So much better. It really does make it look much more like Nicholas Courtney. Very much improved indeed. And I'm hoping that now that we've got this beret version of the Brigadier's head, perhaps we'll see a earlier unit costume, like the one that he wears in The Invasion and in John Pertwee's first season. That would be really, really nice to see, and fingers crossed for the future. Overall, a really nice set, highly recommended. So thanks for watching this review, guys, and please stay tuned later in the week for my review of the Demon set featuring the Brigadier, the Master, and Bok. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.